Good afternoon everyone, good morning or good evening. It's lovely to see you as usual and I hope you're all doing very well indeed. And thank you so much for coming over just to see what I've done for the wee recipe this week. And as you can see, I have done pakora. I actually made a curry for the tea in the slow cooker last night. And yeah, we just popped a couple of these at the side. But this was typically, you know, what I would do to display them if, you know, I was having them as a side or that kind of thing. A wee bit of lettuce and red onion, some lemon for over the top and some spiced onions and a yogurt and mint dip. This is everything that I used here. But as usual, everything will be listed underneath this video and also on the screen as we go along as well. And apologies if you can hear the birds <laughs> chirping away. They're going crazy at the moment. It's just that time of the day. So yeah, that's everything you're going to need there. And I'm using gram flour because that's, you know, traditionally what's used. And it's just a chickpea flour or garbanzo bean flour, but we know it as gram flour. But if you can't find gram flour, just use plain flour. So I'm going to be using haggis and black pudding, but you could use chicken breast or chicken tenders or even vegetables. It's just a batter at the end of the day. So, you know, you can cover whatever you like. So I'm going to be using black pudding and haggis. The black pudding balls, I'm just going to simply roll up, but the haggis ones, I'm going to add some things to. So get your haggis into a bowl. To that, you want to add a small, finely chopped onion and around a tablespoon of fresh chopped coriander, and then a wee bit of garlic and ginger as well. Use fresh ginger. And you just want to smoosh everything together with your hands until it's nice and combined. Now, if you find your haggis quite dry, you can pop this into the microwave just for a few seconds to soften it up a wee bit. You know, if you're finding it hard to shape into balls. But mine was absolutely fine. So you just want to shape it into balls. You can do these any size you like. Mine were sort of golf ball size. So I managed to get, you know, I think I got eight out of my mixture and I'm just going to, no, I didn't, I'm lying. <laughs> I got six out of my mixture and with the black pudding, like I said, I'm just going to simply roll that up. That's got tons of flavour in it and spices already. So we all like the flavour of black pudding just as it is. So I'm just going to dip these ones into the batter. And I managed to get four from the black pudding that I had and they are obviously slightly bigger. <laughs> So the next thing you want to do is get your batter ready. So grab a bowl and also a sieve, especially if you're using gram flour because this has a tendency to be quite lumpy. So pop that into your sieve and just shake it through your sieve or use a spoon, whatever you like, just to make sure all of your lumps are through, through, through the sieve and you've got a nice fine flour in the bottom of your bowl. And then we're going to add your spices to this. So I'm starting with some turmeric or turmeric a teaspoon of turmeric and then also some garam masala so a teaspoon of that and then some ground coriander a teaspoon of that and I'm also using some coriander leaf now this is completely optional it's not part of the recipe but I had it in the cupboard already so I just threw a teaspoon of this in as well because we love coriander and I'm also going to pop in a couple of teaspoons of salt. You want a nice salty batter on this, but of course you can adjust the salt to your own taste. I'm also going to be using sparkling water because this is going to make your, you know, your batter nice and light and it's going to aerate your batter. If you don't want to use sparkling water, you can of course just use tap water, but you will have a heavier, you know, more kind of dense batter. You want to mix up with your water just until you get a nice sort of thick consistency, but you don't want it too thick and you don't want it too watery. Something in the middle. You want your hot, your, your oil nice and hot, around about 190 C. If you don't have a thermometer like I don't, just throw a wee bit of your batter into your hot oil and if it immediately starts to fry and bubble and turn brown, you know that your oil is hot enough. So just make sure you're at that stage. Now you want to coat your balls in some flour, plain flour, self-raising flour, it doesn't really matter. This is just to give your batter something to grip onto and it'll also protect your balls as they're frying and stop everything just sort of oozing out into your hot oil. So dip them into your batter, give them a wee shake and just place them into your oil. 
And as they start to cook and go a lovely golden brown colour, just lift them out. Obviously, the first ones you put in are going to be more brown. So as they're ready, just lift them out and pop them to the side on some greaseproof paper or absorbent paper. And I'm just going to quickly serve mine up with some iceberg lettuce and some red onions. And that's a mint dip, mint and yogurt dip, some spicy onions, and that's the the, the pakora just around the sides there and some lemon wedges i love lemon over the top of pakora and i'm just going to let you see i'm going to let you hear how these sound and how crispy this batter is so here we go Doesn't that sound absolutely wonderful, the crunch on that batter? Like I said, because you're using sparkling water, it does make the batter lovely and light and crispy. But if you want a heavier, more kind of dense batter, just use some ordinary tap water, as I said. And I did make a slow cooker chicken korma, and this is it here, with some rice and a wee chapati. And this is typically how we would have the pakora balls. But just before I move on, I did want to say, as usual, a massive thank you and a heartfelt thank you to the supporters over on Patreon and also to the channel members here on YouTube as well. Thank you all so much for your support and thank you all for watching if you're still here at this point of course and I will catch up with you during the week for another wee recipe shopping haul or unboxing or even back on Sunday for meals of the week and do let me know if you're planning on giving that one a go because they are seriously tasty and if you can't find haggis or black pudding like I said you can use chicken or vegetables or whatever you want really hey, dip, dip whatever you like in the batter the batter is fabulous and if you're not following me over on Instagram yet I am what's for t3 over there and it'd be lovely to see you because so many of you now send me the pictures of the meals that you do and the recipes that you do and I'm always super chuffed to get them but whenever you see me or whenever I see you again mind to have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll catch you off a soon back here on what's for tea so take care and bye for now bye now